New York police say the deadly truck attack was right out of the ISIS playbook. The suspect in the deadly rampage in New York told authorities he was inspired by ISIS videos. On Saipov's cell phone, the FBI says, investigators found about 90 ISIS propaganda videos and nearly 4,000 ISIS-related images. Terrorist groups like ISIS have long used the internet for recruiting. Videos like these all over the internet. This is the best place to be, honestly. With social media, people can reach halfway around the world to do the kind of grooming that was very familiar from the experience of so-called cults in the 60s and the 70s. Can the lessons we learned from doomsday cults decades ago be used to prevent ISIS recruitment today? There is no room for accommodating an apocalyptic cult like ISIS. There is people who are brainwashing these young kids. This radicalization, it's real. Minneapolis, Minnesota has a population of 15,000 Somali Americans, including community leader Deka Hussein, the mother of eight children, among them her son Abdirazak. My son, when I bring him in this country, he was only 10 months, and he grew up here. But over time, her son and other young men in the community felt increasingly alienated, facing high unemployment and struggling to fit in. In 2013, two of his friends were involved in a lunchroom brawl at school, which they saw as a sign of hostility towards Somali immigrants. We're the minority here. We're the ones who are about 10, 15 students. Why are we being attacked? Young people, particularly young men, if they're living in a context where they feel alienated, they feel like they're not getting a, a fair deal, they can then be open to indoctrination. Then they're susceptible to thinking of, of these larger messages which come flooding at them through the internet. We are men honored with Islam who climbed its peaks to perform jihad. Abdirazak, his friends and others formed a secret group that watched hundreds of hours of ISIS recruitment videos and stoked each other's radicalism. America, do you think you want to feed us by bombarding our homes with your drones and F-16s? You are sadly mistaken. The recruitment handbook of ISIS, I would say, is on a PhD psychology level. The ideology can talk almost exclusively about justice and injustice, about you being the fighter for good, the warrior that defends the poor and helpless against the evil. The fighting has just begun. So that ideology, either through the form of a recruiter or through a video, can tell you, I have identified what is wrong in the world and what is wrong in your life, and these two things are connected. My intuition was to say Over two so years, the young men transformed from typical American teens to aspiring jihadist fighters. When nine of them took steps to travel to Syria to join ISIS, they were arrested by the FBI. We have a terror recruiting problem in Minnesota. And this case demonstrates how difficult it is to put an end to recruiting here. Abdirazak was named as one of the ringleaders. My son was brainwashed because he was watching this propaganda video. He thought that if he go to Syria, he's going to go to Haven, and all my family is going to go to Haven. People don't join cults or organizations such as People's Temple. They're recruited, just like we were. Forty years ago, it wasn't slick internet videos that attracted Leslie Wagner Wilson and her family into an extremist cult called the People's Temple. It was the personal charisma of its leader, Jim Jones, and the hope that he would help her sister get off drugs. When you're in a vulnerable situation, by gaining your trust, slowly you become indoctrinated into the ideology of the organization. We have to eliminate poverty, racism, injustice, and war. Her family came to believe in the socialist utopia promised by Jones, who claimed to be the reincarnation of Vladimir Lenin and God. In the meantime, I shall be God, and beside yeah. me there shall be no other. Yeah. The People's Temple amassed close to 5,000 followers, but by 1977 was plagued by defections and unwanted media attention. It's uh, extremely difficult watching their daughter being beat 75 times as I did. To escape legal and media scrutiny, Jim Jones persuaded close to a thousand disciples to follow him to South America, to a jungle commune in Guyana they called Jonestown. Everybody's happy down here. You can see that that's an obvious fact. 
When I first arrived at Jonestown, I felt optimistic, and I was hoping that I was going to be able to live a fulfilled life in a socialist environment. But after six months, Jim's paranoia increased, and there were fake shootings in the jungle by security guards to make us think that we were under attack. There was no way to get out, no escape. I got a hell of a lot of weapons to fight. I got my claws, I got compasses, I got guns, I got dynamite. I got a hell of a lot to fight. I'll fight, I'll fight. It was a tactic of Jim Jones to exaggerate and heighten the sense of being persecuted. And when a team of U.S. officials arrived to investigate the allegations of abuse, I just beg you, please leave us. Jones ordered an attack. A number of people, presumably Temple members, began shooting. California Congressman Leo Ryan and three American journalists had been killed in Guyana, South America. In the aftermath, Jones persuaded his disciples to drink a fruit punch laced with cyanide, which he called a medication. Please get us the medication. It's simple. It's simple. There's no convulsions with it. Resistors were compelled at gunpoint to comply. We didn't commit suicide. We committed an act of revolutionary suicide protesting the conditions of an inhumane world. I think there's a lot to learn from our long experience with groups like Jim Jones and currently with ISIS. Strozier says, like Jim Jones, the leader of ISIS, Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi, claims divine heritage and tells followers they need to be willing to sacrifice themselves in a holy war to destroy the West. One of the things that is almost always true with extremist groups that turn to violence is that they have this apocalyptic idea, hope. That is, only through violence can there be ultimate redemption. That's why it's important for them that they call it martyrdom. I pled guilty because I knew I was guilty and I knew what I did was wrong. Abdirazak and the other Somali-American men are now serving prison time. His mother, Deka Hussein, is working to prevent what happened to her son from happening to others as criminal justice officials look to the future. The young people who were inspired by the ISIS videos, 18, 19 years old. I mean, can't we save these people? Can't we turn them into good family members who are productive people in the community? As an experiment, the Minnesota federal court is requiring some of the men to undergo a de-radicalization program designed by extremism expert Daniel Cooler before they can return home. Well, de-radicalization in essence is the reverse of the radicalization process. It means to re-pluralize the worldview, make it broader again, make them understand that there are no easy answers for single problems. You have to tap into their special interests. Do they want an education? Is there something else that they can do for innocent Muslim communities and not terrorists? What do they care about? Do they care about their family in general? I stepped out of line in Jonestown by uh, realizing that I wanted to leave Jonestown and take my son with me. It was fear that her young son was at risk that led to Leslie Wagner Wilson's break with the People's Temple. It happened after she confessed her growing doubts in a letter to a friend, which was intercepted by Jim Jones. And now I'm exposed. And he reads this letter and I get called in front of the pulpit, surrounded by the community. My mother comes up, my brother comes up, and they yell and scream at me how I should be thankful to Jim because that's what you're supposed to do. And that I'm a, you know, a, a traitor and I should be punished and they're ashamed of me. And this was a nail in my coffin. Early one morning, she snuck out of the Jonestown camp with her son, unaware that 11 members of her family and some 900 others would die later that day.